Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Ernest Anderson with MOS Ministry, Pastor Charlie. And what a joy to be here this morning. And I thank God for another day. I want to ask a quick, is it Friday yet? Yes, it is. That was my son's favorite quote every Friday when he was a kid, five or six years old, going to school. But I want to thank the Lord that I didn't take time to study this. This is part of my life, like Pastor Charlie. When you dedicate your life to the Lord and you live praying and seeking God every day, you don't have to study the word of God to a point where it wears you out, break you down, and make you wonder, what should I say? It's not you. It's the Holy Spirit that lived within you, the Holy Spirit that God gave you when you first got saved. And so you study the word. You meditate on the word. You 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 live the word of God. If you're not living it and you're doing everything else, it'd be hard for you to let someone know that you're saved and born again. You don't have to tell people that. And so I thank God for grace that he extended to me, my family, and to all of you. Because we're here today on Friday morning. We didn't keep ourselves, we didn't, we didn't plan to, we didn't plan to die last night. We planned to get up this morning and get up and serve God. We got up this morning to serve the Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I'm saying to each one of you, spend time in the Word. The word of God, the Bible is our instruction. It's a roadmap for our life from the day we got saved to the day we go home. Stay in the word. Meditate on the word. Pray and see God daily. There's no time to say, well, I got time. We have an enemy that wants us all dead. He wants to distract us, steal our mind, steal our will, destroy our soul. Keep that in mind. That's the enemy that we are fighting against every day. So, Saint, let us let us seek God in all our ways. Amen. So let me pray. Father, we thank you this morning for this time to spend to pray and bring bring truth to my brothers and sisters this morning. Let them hear my heart. Let the Holy Spirit speak through me. Not my words, but your words. Let it flow out of my mouth, out of my heart that would encourage somebody to know that God is no respected person. He loves each one of us. We, are, we mean something to him. You're important to him. Don't ever allow the devil to put in your mind and say you, you're nothing, you're nobody. We're all somebody in Christ. Amen. So starting with Psalm 120, what a beautiful song, what a powerful song. And the first verse goes, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which come my help. Wow, we lift our hands up. Back then, Moses had to go to the holy mountain. But today we have Jesus Christ, who's our, who's our Lord and our Father, our Savior. We lift our hands to him. And you can do it anytime, every day, all day long. It's up to you. Depending on how, how much joy you have in your heart, how you feel that and thank him for saving you from the mess that we was in. You know, we can thank God every day. The joy of the Lord should be our strength every day, regardless of what the, we're going through. And so in Hebrew 12, 1 and 2, let me read that for you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him and do it the cross. Despising the shame and is set down in the right hand, set down at the right hand of the throne of God. But consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest we weary, be weary and faint in our mind. So we look unto Jesus every day for our help, for our protection, for the things that we need in this life every day. It may not be everything you desire, but he meets the needs that you have. You have water, you have clothes, you have a roof over your head. Thank God for that. That is so important. It may not seem much, much to you because you have it, but somebody that don't have that, it means a word to them. They have clothes on their back, have food to eat, and have water to drink. 
and have a bed to lay in when the weather changed from hot to cold. It means a lot to somebody that don't have that. And some things we take for granted. So we have to thank God every day for everything. Thank God for grace. Thank God for all that he does for us in our lives and the desire we have to be there for our children. You know, we, we are God's children. And then once in a while, you tell your mama when she cooked a good meal, mama, thank you for such a wonderful meal. Well, I want to let you know, we can thank God every day for a wonderful life he's given us today. Tomorrow is not promised. Do all you can to lift him up and thank him for what you have, that you have a life. He said he give us life and give it to us abundantly. Use that life to serve God, not to serve yourself, not to serve the world. And many times we try to impress people who we are. Oh, you can impress people who you are. You can do all these different things, but your life is in God's hand. He's the author and perfect of our faith. He, he's the one that controls everything that the devil's trying to do to us. He protects us. He loves us just that much. Even when we make a mistake, he's there. He forgives us. He watches over us. Amen. Grace 2 of Psalm 121. Grace 2 of Psalm 121. I will not suffer the, my help. My help come from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Do you know where your help come from? It don't come from having a good job. It don't come from from, from from other people that see you. Your help come from the Lord. You say, what help is that? To keep you healthy, to keep you in your right mind, to know that God got you. And then you can do all those things. What it said in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things he will give you. So we must seek God first every day, all day, every morning, every night. Seek him first, because he's the one that guides us. Amen? Verse 3. He will not suffer the foot of, to, he will not suffer our foot to be moved. He keeps the, well, well, well he keeps the, will not slumber. In other words, he will not suffer our foot to be moved. He's the one that keeps us, and he will not slumber. He's always watching us just like in real life, like a mother watch their children. Yeah, they may be a little tired, but they hang in there. They watch these babies grow up. Your mother and father watch you grow up. There's many things you were curious about as a child, especially a hot stove or electric plug in the wall. You see these things, and if you if, if mother and father's not watching, you stick a pen in it, electrocute yourself. A hot stove, you want to touch it. And mother say, don't touch it, it's hot, but one day you will touch it. You see how hot it is. You know the reason why she said, don't do this, don't do that. There's many things God tell us not to do once we're saved. We don't go back to our old lifestyle. We don't go back to drinking, swearing, and cursing. All these different things that we used to do, we die to them daily. We may remember some of them. When they pop up in your heart, just rebuke them. Rebuke them in Jesus' name. And cover your mind with the blood of Jesus Christ so your mind won't be wanted in no direction. To be bitter for someone. Your mind won't be rid, uh, uh, set in, 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 in place where you show uh, evil way. Or evil open the door for Satan to come in and cause you to fall. Cause you to become a person like you used to be. Any of the open Satan can get in your life, he will find it. So continue to meditate on the word of God, brother. So continue to be in Christ. Continue to be in that place where God wants you to be. Being a brother and sister in the Lord, we're always praying. We're always being that light that God wants you to be. Amen. Amen. One to uh, verse four. Behold, he that keep Israel shall never slumber nor help. Please. In other words, Israel is in God's hand. And we're worried because they're at war right now. But God got Israel. God wants Israel to 
to repent. God want Israel to get back right with him. That's why during those times back in, in biblical days, he sent evil nation against other nations that 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 turned their back on the Lord. Because they, I got all this. I don't need God anymore. We're going to always need God as long as we live. Whether we save or not, we need help from God or from somebody. But make sure that the help come from the Lord. Amen. Because Israel have lost their place. And every nation want to reach out and help Israel. That's good. But Israel's in God's hand. He's going to protect Israel, the people of Israel. Thank God, Jesus Christ, every day, that he never takes his eyes off of us regardless of how we act, what we do. He loves us just that much. Amen. Verse 5. The Lord is our help, our keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. Well, he is. Well, why would I say that? If I read, if I read Psalm 91 and 11, let me read it for you. For he shall give his, give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hand. Let me read that again. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in, our, in, in their hand. But there's another verse. I put a but. I'm putting this in here. But lest you shall dash thy foot against a stone, lest you turn away from God. You know, if you look at Peter, he, he asked the Lord, Lord, can I come to you when he's walking on water? And the Lord said, come on. But when Peter took his eyes off the Lord and started looking at himself, he began to slip. He fell. That's many times we do that. God bless us with so many things in our lives. Brothers and sisters, we take our eyes off the Lord and start looking at, look at me, I'm this and I'm that. We fall. Not only we fall, we lose our place in the way that God wants us to be. Our light goes out. People don't see us anymore because we've become so prideful. Because we have gained so much in this world. And it's sad. And we don't reach out to help others. So what I'm saying, keep your eyes on the Lord, brother and sister, regardless of what state you may be in. Be content with what you have. And then thank God every day for mercy. Ask God to forgive you for the life you live when that pops up in your heart. Lord, forgive me. I know I messed up, but you got me here. And out of my breath, I'm going to say, Lord, thank you for allowing me to be here again today. And I want to thank you for keeping me on that straight and narrow path that so few find because they're so busy doing everything else. And Satan have blinded the minds of those that don't know who Jesus Christ is. Get to know the Savior, the one that's going to come and receive you at the end of your life. Take you back home with him. Amen. Recognize who you are as a child of God. So important. Thank you. Verse 6, Psalm 121. The Lord shall reserve, preserve thy going out and thy coming in. Oh, wait a minute. Verse 6, I read the wrong one. Glasses right here. The sun shall not strike, strike thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from evil. He shall preserve the soul. I'll read that again. That's verse 7, Psalm 121. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. It's important to know that God got you, brothers and sisters. He's the one that keeps us. He's the one that loves us. He's the one that saved us. And he wants to preserve us. Do all that he desires to do as we represent him in our daily lives. Don't get the big head. Don't get religious. Don't get prideful. Don't get religious because you're still here. God is in control. He knows our going and coming. 
That's why prayer is so important. Thank God that you're able to get up. Thank God that you're able to go out. Thank God that you're able to come, go in and out because he watches over his children. Same with us. When I, today, when our children grow up and go out, we pray for them. That God put a hedge to protect the angel to watch over them and keep them safe. We pray for each other the same way. Not only the children, but each other. That God protect us as we, as we go in and out. In a world that has so many things going on that you don't know what to do and how to do it. Uh, you want to go and buy a gun. You want to get this body gun. Satan is trying to destroy us and put us in a fearful state. But prayer gives us comfort to know that God got us. Nothing happened that he don't know about. And we have to believe that. God is not a God like a human being on earth like us that we forget things. God don't forget who you are. He knows you. He wants you to be steadfast in his word seven days a week, 24 hours a day, all the days of your life. He wants you to stay meditating on the word, seeking him, thanking him, and praising his holy name. You do that, you can find joy in the Lord. What I mean by that, let me read Psalm 511 for you. It said, let all, let, let all those that put their trust in, in the Lord. Now, let me read that again. Let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because I'll defend them. Otherwise, he defends us. Let, let them also that love thy name be joyful. The Lord name, just knowing the name who Jesus Christ, that's joy, that's peace. Because it's in your heart. And it, and it penetrates your mind to speak out of your mouth. Say, Lord, I'm so joyful. I'm so peaceful because I got joy. I got peace. You know, we want to praise him all the time. That's a song that said, lift our hand and praise our Lord. Amen. The Lord shall preserve going out, preserve thy going out and thy coming in. From time to, from time, forward, never, forevermore. That's the last verse. I'm gonna read it again. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in, and in from this time forward, even forevermore. Many of us, we have fear of going out because how things are going on in today's world. But don't let the fear grip your heart. You're saved, you're born again. God watches over each one of us that are saved. And he knows those that, are, that don't love him. And prayer and bind and loosen. And as it said in Psalm 91, put on a whole arm of God. Let me read that for you because we need to put that on. And it's hard to wear it if you got sin in your life. That's in Psalm That's in Psalm 91. That's in, actually, that's in Hebrew. That's in Ephesians. Give me a minute here. Yeah. Put it up on my phone. Ephesians 6.10. Just bear with me, saints. I love you guys. God is so good, I tell you. You don't have to study to show yourself approved, but the Bible says do just that. Because God love, love you just that much. Ephesians 6 10 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. In order to be strong in the Lord, you must be seeking God every day, not sometime, not when you feel like it. Well, let me praise God because I'm going through trouble. Trouble going to always be there. Just waiting for you to take your eyes off the Lord. But verse 11 said, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And, and when you do that, 
you're seeking God with all your heart daily. You're walking with the Lord the best you know how. You're, being, you're edifying each other, people that you come into that doesn't have that knowledge of who God is, uh, weak in their faith. You want to encourage them. But let me read 12 also, Ephesians 6. It says, for we not, for we rather not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness and high place. We don't try to destroy each other like the world is doing now. We see it and it hurts our heart and we pray. We pray about everything as saints. We pray that those be comfort that are out there in the in this world that don't know Jesus Christ. Pray that they get saved. That's our mission, to pray for a nation that have turned their back on the Lord, the creator. And he sees everything that's going on. So I want to read one more verse for you all. First, first Peter 3.10. In my minute to put it up on my phone. I thank you for your patience. I thank you just for being here to hear a brother cry and that are concerned for other brothers and sisters that first Peter. That's in first Peter three ten. I should have cleaned my glass before I got started this morning, but I'm gonna find it. Just give me a second here. First Peter. Crazy. All right, I got it here. In First Peter, you know, his speech is read, but he that will will love life and see good days, let him reframe his tongue from evil and his lip that they speak no guile. Let him ensure evil and do good. What do you mean by ensure the word ensure? Turn away from evil. Don't allow evil to enter your heart or your mind. But when you become evil, you separate your, you're in sin. God cannot honor sin in your life. You call yourself a disciple of Jesus Christ. So you turn away from evil. You rebuke it in Jesus' name and cover your mind with the blood of Jesus once again, as I said earlier. You said, let him ensure evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensure it. In other words, you're seeking peace and you're seeking God. That's verse 11. I'm going to read it again. Let him ensure evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensure it. Verse 12 of 1 Peter 3.10. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. So you don't have to thank God is not hearing your prayers. He hears your prayer. He's not on hear your prayer. He sees you. You see your character. You see how the person that you are, that you want to be steadfast in the word of God, regardless of what's going on in your life. By all means, don't give up on the Lord once you have come to the Lord. Surrender all to Jesus Christ. Be strong enough to surrender everything to God. Yeah, we're strong in our mind and our physical strength, but surrender everything to God. Be strong enough to do that. Let him help you get through this new life that you have Ask God to come to your heart to save you. You're in a new life now. That old life is gone. You had a feeling for that old life when you got saved. You buried it. If you're not, work on burying it. Put it away. Let it go. You have a new life in the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is our helper. He want to help you get there. Seek him daily for help. Amen. I'm going to read. Verse 12 of 1 Peter 3.10. 1 um, Peter 3.12. For the eyes of the Lord over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayer. Their prayer. But the faith of the Lord is against them that do evil. How simple can that get? When you're doing evil, whatever Satan wanted to do to you, he would do it. He allow you to do certain things, but he never tell you the consequences of your action. God tell you, when you bless somebody, 
you receive blessing back. That's what I'm saying. What you sow, you receive back. You sow good, you get good back. You sow evil, you get evil back. Expect it to happen. No one gets away with nothing. Save or unsaved. Everybody will have to suffer the consequences of their action. And today we're living our decision that we made in our life, each one of us. And to die to that decision, it was good or bad. If it's a bad decision, begin to repent. God is sorry to lead you to repentance for the remission of your sin. If it's good, begin to thank God that you turn away from that old lifestyle, that you're living for Jesus Christ every day, all day long, nonstop. So that's the end of my teaching on Psalm 121. Pastor Charlie, thank you. I love you guys. And I didn't even I didn't even think I was going to do it, but the whole fears it's preach. It's simple. Live what you preach. Walk in Very it. Very simple, mm -hmm. my brother. I'm so excited yes. you, for you jumping in and saying, I'm bumping you. And and great stuff. You know, the first Peter one, it was really great at the end because the, the whole thing was about the hills in the beginning of this psalm today. And, and I just love the way you uh, deviated and went into a few and and you you knew where to go first the first letter of peter it's right there it br brings the point of the hills because the hills when you study the old testament that's where all the heathen gods were being worshiped in israel yeah. and everything and it goes back to numbers it goes back to uh uh well first peter climaxes and that's where you went to end and first kings where's the other one i marked this morning here for all of us isaiah so let me let me just add a couple of scriptures here for everybody because this was exciting you know why ernie you ran with the ball and you did not prepare and that's because the holy ghost always uses all of us and the word of God doesn't return void. You know, let me let me read out of 1 Peter for everybody. Because this came from uh, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And, you know, these guys, they were Jews. You got to understand what this was all about. Elect according, verse 2, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit. Well, in the New Testament today, we have the Holy Spirit. We're to walk in the Spirit. That's why it's very important to search Scripture all the time when we're studying. As I said this morning, instead of taking a, a Scripture out of uh, contents, hold on, i got to let Ernie back in. And uh, it says, bless it, it says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. You always got to understand grace because we, the people, the ambassadors, the servants of the Most High God, now we're walking in the Spirit. We're not in the flesh. And the flesh was Old Testament. There was a lot of flesh in it. But God did something very different in the New Covenant. And grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope, a spiritual birth, brothers and sisters, you know, and living. Now we're living in Christ. Hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And 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 the, the most powerful scripture here was the fifth verse. Well, let me read the fourth. So I always like to read before and after sometimes. To an inheritance incorruptible. And that's why when like I said to Joe the other day, I said, you're redeemed, you're saved, you're sealed. You should be happy. Quit being grumpy and, and get close to God and, and start serving God, you know? We're sinners saved by grace. We can get up and walk with God and by acknowledging him just by faith. And that that's something that you got to really hold on to, something I've learned over the years 
Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So to an inheritance that is what? Incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you and I, brothers and sisters. That's what Jesus did at the tree. Now, here's the power of God from the Old Testament, who are kept by the power of God, how? Through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And, you know, I, I just love the prayer group because we're in the last time. Now, I want to I want to go to, uh, let me go to the scripture. As already Ernie was reading it, let's look at uh, Isaiah. Uh, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew uh, their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. And then prior to that, because I love that scripture, I, I, I tell Joe, I tell everybody here, wait upon the Lord. Don't run. Just wait. Be still and know that I am God. I've been quoting that a lot to a lot of demonized people here. Lift up your eyes, verse 26, on high, and behold who had created these things. In other words, in, in, the, in the psalm today, God was telling him to look above the hills. You got to look up for God. God created the hills. And, and in Israel and Jerusalem, the pagans worshiped their idols on those hills. You can read it in Numbers. You could read it in, uh, let me go to it. Lift up your eyes on high. Behold, who had created these things that bringeth out the host by number. He called them all by names by the greatness of his might. For he that is strong in power, that word power is powerful. Because you don't cast out demons unless you have the power of the Holy Spirit. God is involved. It's not, you can't get prideful of being a servant. You, you're humbled because you're seeing the glory of God. And deliverance is the children's bread. And you got to climb the holy mountain to get to that place where God wants to use each and every one of us. Let me, let me go backwards a little to, where did I put that? Kings. And numbers here in Kings. I just want to read this. And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods, plural, are gods of the hills. Get it? The, the scripture today, God was telling him to look beyond, beyond the hills to the one who created the hills. They were stronger than we, but let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they, and do this thing. Take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms, in other words, in their places, and number thee an army like the army that thou hast lost, horse for horse, chariot for chariot, and we will fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto the voice and did so. And it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben-Hadad numbered the Syrians and went up to Apek to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were numbered and were all present and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids, by the, but the Syrians filled the country. Now, watch what happens in this little story in 1 Kings, you know, because it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. He says, and there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said the Lord is the God of the hills. In other words, there's a God that's greater than what's being worshipped on the hills with the pagans and the altars and everything else. And when I was studying commentary, I, I, I came across this because I've never been to Israel, but I have friends that have been to Israel. In fact, my mechanic, Ryan and his wife went over there. He got baptized in the Jordan. I mean, it, it, pretty crazy that God puts people in my life that just came back from Israel. 
and he was so excited about going there. I just never really had an earnest to go to Israel. But other great men of God, look at Derek Prince. He's buried in Israel. And there came a man of God, spoke the king of Israel, let's say the Lord, because the Syrians have said the Lord is the God of the hills. He is not the God of the valleys. Therefore, will I deliver all this great multitude into thy hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So sometimes we got to get our heads out of what the rudiments, the things of the world are, and realize that we're supposed to be serving the one that created everything. And, and there's many gods in our world today. Let me go back a little here to Numbers. Numbers 13, beginning in verse 28, I have it highlighted. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak here. The Amalekites dwelled in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. There you go, the hills. All the pagans were in the hills. Pretty amazing. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of the Jordan. And Caleb, remember, they sent in the spies. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched into the children of Israel, saying, The land, though, which we have gone astray. And then it goes, where's my clothes? And I must have dropped my ticket this morning. So I was trying to keep up with Ernie. Which one did I forget? Uh, this was out of Thomas Nelson. It says here, God is our helper. The God who made the hills is the God who gives you this, the help. He is the God of the hills and the valleys. 1 Kings 20, 23, 30. And then, that was Numbers. I read 1 Kings 20, 20, 30 already. And if not greater, the God that goes before you stays awake to guide you to guard your path. He is next to you. He is over you. He will take you safely to Zion. And you know, when I was studying this, I said, wow, upon Mount Zion, there's going to be deliverance. So we don't have to lean on anything except follow the word of God. It's the word of God that's holy. It's the word of God. It's God speaking to all of us. And it's he's no respecter of people. You do what God says to do in the word of God, and he takes care of business. That's why in Ezekiel, he says, I will be your God and you will be my people. So to, to run around with chickens with their heads cut off, we need to be still and know who God is. And the only way you can get still is sometimes to be quiet and read the Bible and read the chapters and it says here in closing, you know, this was really good. Be sure you lift your eyes enough so that you see by faith the great God who cares for us. Because the 10 spies in Canaan did not look high enough. They saw the giants and the walls, but not the Lord who is far above all. And that's in 13 back it up 